So again, Chris Hintz. I am a director of products and solutions here at Fortinet, focused on the wireless portfolio. I want to take you through our concept around the SD branch and the idea of enabling and securing everything from the WAN all the way to the access edge. Now, I had this slide titled something different, but then I just couldn't resist because Lee is so excited about digital transformation <laughs> that I had to make sure that I rephrased it as digital transformation. I'm glad I could please you, sir. Um, now, that we're seeing a lot of expansion at that WAN edge. Branches are changing. And, you know, cloud enablements and new devices, but really what it boils down to is kind of the concept behind the whole buzzword of digital transformation, which is just the reality that people are leveraging technology to simplify their operations. And there's lots of different ways that can do that. Cloud applications allow them to do that. Bringing in new IoT devices allow them to do that. So a lot of what, ironically, is complicating the network is a push to simplify the overall operations of the company. But that doesn't oftentimes help IT people. So you still need a good way to deal with that. Now, I do want to be clear before I go too deep into this. Yes, I'm using the terminology branch. But I'm kind of using that as an overarching term. Certainly not claiming that the only thing that the word branch applies to is you know, a large company like here's we've got, we got Fortinet's headquarters right here, and if we've got a smaller one somewhere else, that's a branch. Realistically, retail chains look like branches. Really, any situation where I have a smaller site remote that doesn't really have a full-fledged IT force, because IT is more centralized, really looks like a branch situation. There's a lot of distributed enterprise cases. Schools look like this as well. In fact, I think, was it New York Times? I think there was, yeah, it was a New York Times story uh, just last month talking about how a lot of these changes in technology that are being driven into schools have started to make schools a favorite target of hackers. And it really is that same idea that all this change and use of technology to simplify and improve the experience for teachers and students is outpacing a lot of the IT department's ability to keep track and secure it. When we look at the evolution of the branch, this is what we've seen when we've been talking to a lot of our customers. First thing is they've started to look at their WAN edge. And they started to get grumpy, particularly as they're moving to more and more SaaS services, and, they, and a lot of services are going straight to the internet anyway, of their traditional WAN's too expensive, and they're starting to look at SD-WAN. And SD-WAN, I don't have to tell you, very hot topic out there, not a direct applicability to what I'm going to talk about today. I just want to touch on it to a small extent because it offers a lot of good cost savings and improvements. One of the struggles people have is that SD-WAN in and of itself doesn't really have a lot of security or visibility into what's going on, particularly now that I've got a direct connection into the internet. And that's why Fortinet really is talking to people around the idea of secure SD-WAN. And we are starting to see the industry as a whole start to realize that, yeah, you know what, I can't just implement SD-WAN and assume that that branch is as secure as it was when I had a dedicated link. Because it really isn't. It's a very different world. Now, I'm going to give a quick brush through a little bit about our SD-WAN solution. We actually presented at a tech field day in February and went in depth. So if people see my light treatment and want to know more, certainly encourage you as Nirav Shah, go, go find those videos up on the web and you can see a full thing, including, if I remember correctly, we even did a demo. Well, as a real light treatment, just for those who didn't see that video and don't care for the, the nitty gritties, we actually built the first purpose-built SD-WAN ASIC to try and speed up the operations but still give visibility into that data. That gives us ultra-fast SD-WAN while still not compromising any of the security. So our overall SD-WAN solution means we built that ASIC directly into the FortiGate. So I've got the FortiGate hardware with that SD-WAN ASIC built into it. I've got the FortiOS operating system that I talked about earlier. So that's going to give me my capabilities around the routing, the SD-WAN, next generation firewall, WAN optimization. And then over the top, I can bring in the Forti Manager, what I mentioned earlier in the fabric, to manage this across a disparate number of sites. So that's uh, the architecture of our SD-WAN solution. And 
I know I kind of just say, oh yeah, we're so much faster, we're so much better. That's actually, we've done some independent testing. So we have, we've taken this to NSS Labs. NSS Labs has given us some really great feedback in terms of what they've rated the solution. We got a recommended rating now two years in a row. You'll note that only three out of the plethora of SD-WAN vendors were, are able to claim that. We also had the best TCO of those on offer. And these results, I'm almost positive, are linked off of our website. So if you want more information around this, particularly to the SD-WAN and this comparison, you can, you can find this NSS Labs report uh, linked off the website. Chris, would you be willing to speak for a few seconds, especially for some of the viewers that might not know the difference between like NSS Labs versus some of the other, the other testing organizations that manufacturers pay? Sure, uh, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I don't want to call out names, but so I like the way you phrase it. There are other organizations that uh, most people honestly realize are sort of pay-for-play organizations where I can come to them, I can say, here's my box, whom I want to win. Here's a couple competitors' boxes, whom I want to lose. I want you to run this set of tests, which I've likely already verified are going to make my equipment look the best. Please run those. And then publish a report from you guys under your banner saying how great I am. That's not what NSS Labs does. What NSS Labs does is say, OK, we're going to run a test, in this case, right about SD-WAN. And where we have our test protocols all lined up. If vendors would like to participate, let us know. We'll arrange. They own the test plan, so it's, we can't drive it in a direction that's advantageous to us. They are doing this based on trying to drive the industry in a positive direction. So we don't get a chance, for example, to ask for changes. If, if the results come out and we perform badly, we don't get to go, no, 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 no. Test it this way. We don't, we don't get that flexibility. So the nice thing here is it's not a pay for play. It's not a situation where we are actually secretly driving the test. NSS Labs is very good about being vendor neutral in the testing they do. Thank you. That's a, a good thing to call out. So as we come back over here, okay, well, that, that's great. But, you know, there still is one remaining little hassle of a problem. And then oftentimes, if you still look at the branch as a whole, there's still a lot of other point products out there. And a lot of the products that are sitting out there have to do with that access edge that we talked about earlier. The switching, it's the APs. It's all the devices that are hanging out there and what to do about securing those. And you still need equipment around that. And that still is a management hassle. And that's why Fortinet has also started talking about this at an SD branch level. So we want to actually converge and integrate the security and the control from the WAN edge all the way down to the access edge, make this simple to provide a branch that is secure all in one location under one easy banner. And so what that really means is we're taking the piece that I talked about earlier for SD-WAN, FortiGate with its built-in SD-WAN, et cetera, and we're layering in the access products that I talked about earlier for AP. For the switch. And we're also bringing in Fortinac. Because Fortinac has a great ability to help me deal with the IoT cloud. So I think I'm now two, two for five against uh, Lee's buzzword bingo. Uh, colors. Colors. Purple yes. versus red. <laughs> uh, that's so a, I would I would have thought if I, I must be misinterpreting. I would have thought the Fortinac would have been red, not purple. So I, I'm not going to play the the justification game for how we chose this, <clears throat> but uh, the the overall Fortinet security fabric is color coded, and so this matches the color coding of our products. Fortinac is in a is in a purple category, and so that's why it's purple, purple here. Is access. Purple is access and endpoint, if I remember correctly. All the endpoint stuff is also purple. Thanks. So what this allows us to do is because we have the fabric, I've got the integration of the switch and the AP coming into the FortiGate. I've got Fortinac over the top able to share information. So I have a much better security environment. 
And I wanted to bring this in again. I know we talked about this <coughs> last year, but I, I know not everyone necessarily watches every year's videos. I mean, they should for Fortnite at least, but you know, it, it doesn't always happen. To remind you that when I'm talking about this integration of the access layer in with FortiGate, what I'm talking about is what we call our FortiLink protocol. And what that does is it actually brings the firewall and the switch together, brings them directly in, makes them available on the firewall as firewall policies. So what's interesting is for any of you who have used a FortiGate before, and you are aware of what interfaces look like in the FortiGate and assigning a security policy to it, an SSID actually just shows up there like it's a firewall interface. Is this a tunneling protocol, a link layer discovery protocol, or? This is a, for FortiLink, it's primarily a control protocol. Now, okay. if I, now I can also, for example, tunnel traffic back to, to the FortiGate directly from, from an AP if, if I want that directly secure Over that. this FortiLink or over a different tunnel? I would not say it's over FortiLink. And the reason I would not say it that way is that FortiLink is more of a collection of management protocols. Okay. I, I think arguably if you go to the engineers, they're going to say one of those also acts as the encapsulation method for the traffic. But given that FortiLink is kind of bigger than that, I think it, I think it would be dishonest to say that, it, that it's that over FortiLink. Okay, gotcha. Obviously, we feel that this is a much more simple and extensible means of doing things because I now have a common management interface. There's, is this how you define yeah. the fabric? Uh, uh, this is a great example of two things. One, our fabric, in, in the sense that we have multiple Fortinet products working together. Yeah. But I think this, to me, is also one of the single biggest and most, most glowing examples of security-driven networking because you have our premier security appliance directly driving the networking layer. And it, it controls it, it secures it, 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 is, it is the heart of what's controlling you know, your switching and your APs. And this is an auto building and joining protocol or something you have to go touch every box or uh, it's something I've never, I've not heard of. So I, I, is this like a... Sam, like, you were here last year. Come I don't on. think I heard about Fortilink though. <laughs> Yeah, so the, this Fortilink is the name for what we what we demoed last year. It's the idea that if I plug an AP in, it, it's, it can show up in the FortiGate. I click and adopt it, and I'm off and going. I can set up auto adoption if I want to, or or not. I know that there are definitely some religious level beliefs on whether or not auto adoption of APs is a good thing to any controller and any solution anywhere. Um, same thing goes for switches. I can all adopt a switch that plugs in, or I can set it to, to click and adopt. But it is really just a click, yep, I want you to manage this thing, boom, I'm online. Hey, yeah, push this config to it, off I go. Now that's at the FortiGate level, so stealing ahead a little bit. We also have, you know, Forti Manager to do that, because right now I'm talking kind of site level, but we can also go across multiple sites if I leverage something like Forti Manager. Is that yes, helpful? absolutely. Cool deal. Um, and I know this was like the hammer that I wielded multiple times last year, so I'm going to try to be a little bit more gentle about this year, but no licenses for this. I don't have to turn on the wireless controller with a license of some amount of dollars on the FortiGate. No, it's, it's in there. Anybody at home that's got a FortiGate right now, you plug in a Forti AP to the front of it, you're going to have the option of adopting that Forti AP. No licenses on a per AP basis. So it's not just that the controller has to be, doesn't have to be turned on. I don't have any per AP license against the FortiGate. What if you want to use a cloud to manage the APs? Do you need a license in that case? If I'm using the cloud for Forti AP cloud, where it's just the APs against the cloud itself, I have two tiers. I have a completely free tier that is, all, the only limitation is we have some of what we, what we call like enterprise grade features, like being able to adjust rates directly, setting up like a location, if you want to set up a bouncing into location, dealing with bonjour service. There's some kind of enterprise level features that do require a subscription. But if I'm say like an SMB, and what I really want to do is stand up that AP, start broadcasting an SSID, and have the traffic go from the wireless out the wire, I can do that on the free service. And that also means you know, a couple things. Well, I can backtrack because it's a nice that's a nice opportunity to talk about. Um, also means that if I choose 
to stop my subscription on the cloud. I don't have a bunch of bricks on my ceiling. Yes, I will lose any of the advanced stuff that I had access to. So if I was using Bonjour Relay or something, that's, that's not going to function. But I, my, all my SSIDs are still going to be broadcasting. My traffic is still going to flow through. So that's a very ni that's a nice feature. In addition, we can move things around. So this flexibility of licensing also means that these APs, particularly the, the U model that I, that I mentioned, like what our new Wi-Fi 6 is, if I had it to the cloud and I decide I want to, maybe I was a very small little SMB and all I had was one AP in my shop and then I upgraded a little bit and I, I decided I wanted a FortiGate because I needed a FortiGate, so now I want to manage it with the FortiGate. I just move it across. Same AP is going to work with the FortiGate. So I also don't have sunk cost in terms of like, oh, this AP was a cloud AP. If I have moved on past the cloud, it's got to go out and I've got to buy something. No, we don't have that problem. Now, I mentioned that in addition to switches and APs, that we also see Fortinac as part of this solution. What Fortinac has is the ability to actually use the FortiGate as a traffic sensor. So I don't have to put a bunch of extra gear into the branch for Fortinac. I can let Fortinac be at my knock sock, overseeing all my, all my branches. It can be talking to the FortiGate, getting information from the FortiGate. And by extension, since the FortiGate is managing my access layer and has access to all my access layer information, that also means Fortinac has visibility down through my access layer. And that's going to give me my IoT visibility, and I don't, didn't have to put anything else on site. Now, there was kind of this question about management earlier, and I said, well, well, you know, there's also Fortinac Manager. That's sort of like we talked about this site, how a site would work and how that particular branch could be secured and, and what the equipment there looks like. But as I talked at the beginning about like who we see these branches are, a lot of these things are situations where they've got dozens, maybe hundreds of sites. And you probably, I mean, maybe somebody does. Most people don't want to actually have bookmarks for all 100 sites and go into each one and configure them. And that's what FortiManager is all about. So you can see in my Fortinet Manager dashboard, I can actually see here's all my branches with where they are. I can see their status. I can adjust their config. So I can actually do that all from, an, uh, I don't think this was on Lee's list, but a single pane of glass. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can do that all from Fortinet Manager. I have visibility across all of them. So I don't have to touch everything individually. And this becomes really powerful when I pair it up with Fortinet Deploy. So Fortinet Deploy is our, is our cloud-based uh, deployment tool to allow for kind of zero-touch deployment. So now I don't have to send the IT guy on site. In my cloud portal, I know what the equipment was. I can already pre-seed my Fortinet Deploy server to say, hey, this series of equipment, here's the IP address of Fortinet Manager. When they, when they come online and phone home, send them here. So I can have a lower level tech on site, plug it all together, gets internet connectivity, boom, up it goes up to the cloud, says, hey, Ford to deploy, am I supposed to go anywhere? Otherwise, I'll just go to standalone mode and go, yeah, you're supposed to go over here. And then I'm going to see that equipment show up in my Ford Manager interface, and I'll have the ability to push config to it. I'll even be able to see from the Ford Manager interface like what's plugged in where, and if I had some personal preference about which ports are used for what, I could even call the tech up. No, I told you I want the APs on this port. And so I have all that visibility, and I don't have to be there. Um, uh, Michael Davis online is asking, yeah. uh, he says, maybe it's because I've been burned by it before, but this seems like a huge disaster waiting to happen due to concentrating so many services into just a couple failure domains. Any, any comment on sort of the consolidation of services and, and, well, and the like? I, I mean, I think at a basic level, if, well, let's, I guess let's move our way back down the chain, since I'm on the Fortinet Manager side. If your Fortinet Manager, wherever it's installed, gets hit by a meteor, and Fortinet Manager is no more, the equipment and all the branches are not going to suddenly shut down. Now, are they going to get a new config from the Fortinet Manager that's now a smoking husk? No. But they're going to continue happily operating as they were. And while it may not be my favorite way of doing it, 
I can still happily log into a given FortiGate if I need to to administer it. Zooming back down to the branch level, okay, so I've got the FortiGate there. Remember, it's, the, it's my gateway and my bridge as an, as an SD-WAN controller. Yeah, you know, if, if my gateway to the outside world, you know, if it's, if this time it's not a meteorite, but a hot, you know, a particularly well-targeted, you know, gamma particle that somebody somehow manages to just destroy just the FortiGate, yeah, in the same sense that if I had any router at any location and it gets magically taken out, I've got a problem. So I, while there's some truth in the sense that if my router goes down, that's a serious issue, I don't know that it is significantly more problematic than the problem I have if my router goes down. Now, the most I can say, I mean, my switches are still going to be switching. So the worst possible situation would be if I had chosen to tunnel all my traffic from my APs back up to the gate, then, yeah, they wouldn't be able to tunnel back up to the gate. Um, and I think I don't, I'm waiting for clarification from him, but mm -hmm. I, I think um, the concern comes from, you know, the age-old mantra of, you know, uh, wireless controllers make terrible firewalls. Firewalls make terrible wireless controllers, right? Do I, you know, don't don't put things into boxes because mm -hmm. you feel like you can shoehorn an SD WAN controller into a wireless LAN controller, right? Um, and, and so I think that I think it's that level of consolidation of services where you've got one box that can be your UTM, it can do your 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 wireless, it can do you know seemingly everything. Mm -hmm. I think is probably what he was after. Super box. The super box, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and maybe that's a bit I, of a. I, I know. I well, no, I think it's it's a fair. It's a fair point in the sense that I know there are people who worry about that, and they would prefer, for example, to buy. And I'm not trying to put words or, or make it sound bad, but they would prefer to prefer to buy from five different vendors, all of whom they believe were the best of breed in in each that in, particular thing, in yeah. each potential silo, and. That is a philosophical way to go, and if folks don't mind, therefore, having to manage five completely different management interfaces because they went with five different vendors, each of which they believe was the best that could possibly be, okay. Um, frankly, part of the reason that we go to places like NSS is to show that, like with the SD-WAN, we are actually one of the leaders and a recommended SD-WAN supplier. So in that case, you know, I think we have independent uh, agencies showing that our solution in that particular case is a, you know, may, may, maybe not number one best of breed possible. I don't actually, can't remember exactly whose dot is just higher than another's on, on that one, probably because I don't manage the SD-WAN. But uh, certainly it's a recommended and it's up in the upper right. So I don't think it's that much of a trade-off. And I, to me, the benefits of not having to hassle across multiple vendors and, of course, the inevitable finger-pointing that I think like both NetAlly and even MetaGeek talked a little bit about from the troubleshooting side of when something goes wrong, you've got six vendors, you virtually guarantee the guy you're on the phone with, it's not his problem. It's one of the other five. I think he says, uh, I think... Or he clarifies, or less cataclysmic, uh, a code bug on a firewall breaking wireless since it's also the controller. Mm. It's the inevitable, these things are built by humans when a defect arises mm -hmm. across so many different <laughs> things that you're trying to touch, right, Lee? Well, you know, Lee's pretty adamant that there are no bugs ever in wireless yeah. controllers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think we can create scenarios in which any any given topology can have a bug, and therefore it's all bad. Uh, realistically, I think most people find a stable code base. That's what they leverage. You know, they move forward. Like all organizations, we do our we we do have a test organization. We do our best. I will not claim that a bug has never made it out into the open because that make me a bold-faced liar, and Lee would beat me up afterwards. But I, I think that overall risk, quite honestly is probably overblown versus the day-to-day -day TCO benefits of, of dealing with a single yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. So grand scheme of things, I think you're far better off in your day-to-day -day dealing with 
a single box that you go into and manage your manage what you're doing. And yes, you know, I think we all see. I watch the Twitter storms every time a new release from any vendor comes out uh, about. Hey, has anybody tried this release yet? And what we do? Oh, hey, everybody, don't install it if you're running this. Mm. So I think it, there's always that caveat of yeah, you know, install and, and maintain your code intelligently. But in a weird way, that bridges nicely, I guess, in a sense, because I debated about having this slide, but I, I, I put it in anyway and said, you know, this isn't just me talking and trying to convince you that people might want this. We actually have a real case study, large environmental solution provider with thousands of locations, millions of customers, and billions in terms of revenue. And this was their key thing. They wanted to reduce their WAN costs, so they were very much interested in SD-WAN, but they also wanted to simplify each of these branch locations. That was really big to them. And if you take a look at what they put in, they put in a pretty sizable chunk of what we talk about as ST branch. And this is why. It was exactly these, these arguments and exactly this, this benefit. And they said, yeah, you know what? If we can take all this and get this aspect of our branches all under one umbrella to manage it that way, that's a huge boon for us. And we won this very, very easily because of that. So as a quick recap kind of, of what this architecture looks like in practice. As I said, you've got the actual WAN edge coming in from the cloud, et cetera. I've got my SD WAN on, running on my FortiGate. I've got Forti Manager and my NOC SOC kind of overseeing that. For the access layer, I'm bringing in my Forti switches, my Forti APs. At that IoT edge, I've also got my centralized FortiNAC securing all of that. And that really brings me to what we're calling this you know, secure SD branch solution that we see as being very successful and actually being you know, very well regarded when we talk externally. But I also wanted to point something out because we are Fortinet. We have a pretty wide portfolio. We have a number of other extended branch solutions for those people who would like to consolidate vendors as much as possible for their own simplicity. So we've also got what we call the 40 extender, which is our LTE-based product. So if you're moving to SD-WAN and you're looking for what you wanted your, say, your LTE WAN connection to be, we can provide that too. So we can actually take that aspect off the table. If you wanted to protect those, you know, all these laptops and your client devices, we have a client solution or for the client. So I can make sure that at least my corporate assets are protected. If you wanted to add two-factor authentication, we have Forta Token. And this is usually where I wave my phone around, but I try to make sure it wasn't in my pocket. We use this actually internally. And I, I will tell you, as someone who has hated tokens, you remember I kind of talked about this on the podcast, as someone who's hated tokens, I've been really impressed by Forta Token. At least the app that works on, on my cell that's part of the Forta Token solution. Whenever I'm in a two-factor situation, Phone buzzes, yep, yeah, approve it, and I'm in. It's, it's really sweet and a really nice way to add two-factor authentication in at your branches, particularly maybe smaller branches or even home workers, people who work from home sometimes bring that to bear. We also have a camera. So if you want to get rid of that IoT camera and, and bring in just a Forta camera, you can do that. And if we offer a voice PBX. So if you want to bring Forta voice, in and basically go one-stop shopping for your branches from Fortinet, our extended branch solutions really allow you to do that. So we have an opportunity to offer growing companies and people who have a lot of branches an ability to standardize and have that branch in a box opportunity. What do you consider a branch, Chris? What's the kind of a working definition of what a branch is as far as size of whatever? So, me personally, I don't really put size to it quite as much as I put, where's IT relative to that? Because if they are not the main IT hub, and in fact, if they have little to no IT services at that location, because IT is located somewhere else, and that's considered just a satellite thing to them that they're managing, to me, that looks like a branch. And, and that's why, to me, like a K through 12 school district, 
looks like, a school looks like a branch, even though likely the district headquarters that the IT guys are sitting in is probably physically smaller than a number of the schools that I would be calling a branch in this scenario. To me though, they look more like a branch. There's no, there's no IT presence there. Maybe there's a science teacher, but they don't really have an IT presence there at all. That's not, it's remote from them. They would have to travel if something went wrong. So to me, that's still a branch. So in that scenario, let's say we've got another vendor in mm -hmm. the main site, and this looks interesting for remote sites. Is the uh, SD-WAN, is there any compatibility, or do I have to put Fortinet in the core to connect? No, nothing would require you to have Fortinet in the core. If I want site-to-site -site VPN, if I want to... If you want a site-to-site -site VPN, certainly there's some benefits to having a FortiGate on either end managing that VPN tunnel. Um, but again, you wouldn't necessarily need it beyond the security that you might want for a site-to-site -site, you know, VPN tunnel. And that's not... Yeah, I might not be asking you right. Okay. Can you have Fortinet on one end and anybody yes. else on the other? Yes. Okay. Without that MPLS network there? Excuse me? Without the MPLS going back to the data center? With just the internet? If there's no, there's, so I, I, I want to make sure I'm answering you correctly. There is nothing about what this is doing from an SD-WAN perspective that requires somebody on the other end for it to function correctly. So I'll probably go on to Lee's one. So if, if I have an insecure network between the branch and the head office, data center, whatever, is it a standards-based VPN that can connect into a competitor's VPN concentrator, or do you need the 40, uh, 40 net on the other side to terminate that VPN? Well, you, I think I can keep me honest, but I do not believe we can use a standard VPN tunnel, can't we? Yeah. Hmm? There's a minor thing on the four error correction. Yeah. All right, thank you. You can connect to any other VPN device, and Fortinet will connect to that. Fortigate, you can set up a VPN with other one. I'm not going to claim there. We do, I'm pretty sure, have some features if you've got Fortigate on both sides that are additive and, and beneficial. There's nothing that requires it. Yeah. With the Fortigate, you have obviously have the security fabric extended towards your brand. Yeah, there, there's benefits. benefits. I'm not going to claim there's not benefits, but there's there's nothing that's going to require you to have it. Yeah. When you were showing uh, Forta Manager earlier, uh, that looked an awful lot like a Windows app. Um, is that is that the way Forta Manager works? Is there you know is it a Windows? Oh app no, I'm sorry. I just I just trimmed the browser off the okay. off the image. Okay. All right. No, this this is. I, I'm logged in, so when, I, so when you're talking about that, that image right there? Yes. Yeah, I just, I just trimmed okay. the browser off the edge just because otherwise it was eating up, eating up space around the outside and making it even smaller on the screen. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. But it's a good question because I didn't clarify which way that was available. Yeah. Uh, if you go back to the picture where you have everything. The sure. Um, are you guys doing anything related to IoT? Maybe adding like a 40 hub, whatever, <laughs> uh, to manage the IoT piece? Um, or like which which new product are you that's working on? That's the next on? segment, isn't it? Yep. Mm. Oh, it's the next segment. Okay. All right. Well, I have Fortinac, <laughs> which I'm going to talk about next in terms of how we secure, aid, and onboard the IoT world. But if you're asking about directly like IoT management, like OT management of stuff, um, not prepared to talk about that today, but you know, if it even remotely touches on security, which IoT and OT does, you know. So, because uh, you know, looking at all of this, I would guess you guys are not going to stop, you know, there. <laughs> so my question, <laughs> my question was more like, which you know other products are you guys working on to complete the landscape? We are working on lots of things. Okay. Um, for those, for those interested to see kind of all the different things that are even already available, because I don't even touch on a fraction of it, if you go onto our website and you go to products, you see actually a subset. If you go to, I believe it's the bottom right of that menu and you click, is it all products or more products? I don't know. <laughs> I think it's all products. Then you'll get dumped to the page that shows all the four to blanks. There's lots. 
products. Is it A to Z products? So if you, click on, if you go to products and then click A to Z products, you'll get the full listing and you're going to see lots of stuff there that, that you, know, you never really hear about from Fortinet because it's not a main focus of a presentation like this.